Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today we have rubber dam from Operative Dentistry. So rubber dam is uh, nothing but uh, a thin square sheet of uh, rubber which is used to isolate operative site from the rest of the mouth. So which basically contains a hole in the middle which allows the dentist to isolate the treatment area using a dental clamp around the tooth and they are basically made of latex but there are also non latex alternatives are available so this session is about uh, the rubber dam its components how to fix a rubber dam how to remove a rubber dam so moving on so rubber dam provides the best possible isolation in 1864 S.C. Barnum, a New York City dentist, introduced a rubber dam into dentistry. So it is used to define the operating field by isolating one or more teeth from oral environment. And this dam eliminates saliva from the operating site and retracts the soft tissue. So the advantages are, as we all know, it provides a dry, clean field and there will be improvement of access and visibility by eliminating the moving structures such as the tongue, lip, cheeks and saliva from operating field and retraction and also the protection of soft tissue because in operative procedures there are chances of uh, injury to the soft tissue then prevention of inhalation and ingestion of foreign bodies, the files and other things improved properties of dental materials because most of the times when it is mixed with saliva the properties or the actual properties will be reduced and it aids in patient management and it prevents the cross infection and it minimizes the mouth breathing during inhalation sedation procedure but the main problems associated with the rubber dam it's uh, the most difficult part it's its installment usage is very low among the private practitioners because it is very time consuming and the patient most of the patient is not very uh, happy with this so patients objection and time consuming is the one which prevents most of the dentists to use in their clinical practice and which cannot be used in case of extremely malpositioned teeth that is one of the thing because if we have a properly aligned teeth, it is very easy. But if it is a malposed teeth, it's very difficult to fix. And the children who are suffering from asthma or some other respiratory infections or mouth breathing, we just cannot uh, apply this because uh, uh, the present condition of the child may exaggerate. Moving on, the armamentarium. So it consists of a lot of uh, components such as uh, sheets, rubber dam clamps, then the rubber dam frame or holder, then the retainer forceps or the punch forceps and the rubber dam templates or stamps, dental flows and finally the widget. So this is a finally placed rubber dam, you can see the tooth, so this is the tooth which we are going to uh, work on it and this is the uh, retainer, this is the frame and this is the sheet. So the rubber dam sheet as you see here, it is available as rolls or sheets, maybe 5 or square in size. Uh, thin, medium, heavy and extra heavy uh, thickness are available. Color could be mostly the blue or green that is the most unique colors which uh, helps the dentist to um, it is dentist favoring colors because uh, it prevents optic illusion when looking at a blood for a long period of time so it creates uh, optic illusion so in order to neutralize the such optical illusion most of the colors in uh, surgical or medical field will be blue or green so it is to provide good contracts with the surrounding and maybe flavor for the children the second one is a rubber dam clamp or retainer so this is a clamp or retainer it is used to secure the dam to the teeth that are to be isolated and to 
minimally retract the gingival tissue it does two purposes one is secure the dam and the second one is it retract the gingival tissue so it has got uh, parts such as the bow then it has got two uh, jaws and you can see the prongs four prongs two on each jaw so these two jaws the the left jaw and this right jaw is connected by a bow so this pointed parts which connects to the tooth are known as prongs so they are four prongs two jaws and one bow so we have this uh, retainer two types one is winged and the second one is wingless okay so you can easily make out this is wingless and this is wing you can see the wings on both side of this jaw this is the wings which is absent here this is wingless so the retainer is nothing but the clamp so return with wing like projection on the outer aspect of the jaw this is the outer aspect of jaw it provides extra retraction of the rubber dam from the field of operation so it pushes the rubber dam towards the apical side and it also gives extra retraction so these wings are passed through the punched holes in the dam and the dam and the retainer placed together on the concerned tooth so after placement the dam is slipped carefully over the wings onto the tooth so once you see the picture of uh, step by step uh, you will easily understand this procedure next we have the wingless retainer which is not having any wings you can see there is no wings so the retainer is first placed on the tooth and the dam then stretched over the clamp onto the tooth the third component is a rubber dam holder or frame here we attach the entire sheet so it is used to maintain the borders of the rubber dam in position we have young's holder it is a u-shaped metal frame with small metal projections for securing the borders of rubber dam then the ash pattern which is most suitable for children then uh, svenska n of frames are suitable for taking radiographs this is the fourth component is a rubber dam retainer forceps okay stocks and river forceps are there and also ash type is there so it is used for the placement and removal of the retainer from the tooth so we keep retainer at the tip of it for both the purpose that is to keep the retainer in the tooth and also to remove the retainer from the tooth so that is rubber dam retainer forceps then we have rubber dam punch which is used to make holes in the dam because we need to create holes so that the tooth comes out of the hole and this rubber dam will be beneath the tooth surrounding the tooth with the retainer in position so it is like a rotating metal disc which has five to six holes of different size according to the size of teeth as you can see uh, there will be six or five holes based on the size of the teeth and there will be a sharp pointed plunger which is to create the hole in the rubber dam sheet the next one is a rubber dam template or stamp so it is like a template which is uh, with holes in it which provides a template for the size of the tooth which needs to be created for the placement so both have position of the teeth marked on them and are used to transfer them to the rubber dam sheet for the holes to be punched so this gives an idea of the size of the tooth if you want to uh, create a hole which is a maxillary central incisor which you are going to work on it so you can use this template if it is a second molar lower second molar you can use this template so this template has different size then uh, we have dental flows which is tied around the retainer before carried to the oral cavity to prevent the accidental aspiration of the clamp and rigid an elastic which is used to secure the dam around the teeth on the distal side or the farthest side from the clamp so how do we prepare the patient for rubber dam so this rubber dam can be presented as a raincoat that keeps the tooth dry and held on by a button which is clamped and kept straight by a coat hanger which is a frame 
so this is the frame and this is a clamp so local anesthesia should be administered where a clamp may impinge on the gingiva okay which is uh, very optional so the first step is testing and lubricating the proximal contacts so first we need to use a dental flows to test the interproximal contact and remove the debris from the tooth to be isolated the second one is a punching the hole so you can use a template the punch rubber dam punch using this one you can create a hole in the rubber dam sheet based on the tooth which you are going to work then lubricating the dam so the assistant uh, can lubricate both sides of the rubber dam in the area of punched hole okay so using a cotton roll or a glove fingertip to apply the lubricant so the lips and corner of the mouth may be lubricated with petroleum jelly uh, in order to prevent any type of uh, irritation then we have selection of the retainer so uh, we have many varieties and many types of uh, retainer based upon the size of the tooth because it is varies from central incisor premolars and molars so the rubber dam retainer forceps will be used to uh, keep the retainer in desired tooth and there will be a flows tie in the position because as we mentioned there will be a flows tied to this in order to prevent accidental aspiration then we need to test the retainer stability and retention so first test the retainer stability by lifting gently in an occlusal direction with the finger once we uh, placed in position slightly uh, lift towards occlusal direction with the fingertip under the bow of the retainer so an improperly fitting retainer will be shaking or easily dislodged then positioning the dam over the retainer so with the forefinger stretch the um, particular hole of the dam over the retainer and then encircles the tooth and will be on the rubber dam sheet the seventh step is apply the napkin so once the operator gathers the rubber dam in the left hand where the assistant can insert a uh, finger and thumb of the right hand uh, through the napkin opening and grasp the bunched dam held by the operator then positioning the napkin so the assistant pulls the bunched dam through the napkin and position it on the patient face uh, then uh, we can attach the frame so this is the last step we can attach the frame so that it will be in position so there will be uh, projections here so we can uh, stretch it and connect to the metallic projections which is uh, present outwards which will be projected outwards from the each border uh, then attaching the nap strap so this assistant attaches the neck strap to the left side of the frame and passes it behind the patient's neck and the uh, operator attached to it to the right side of the frame then uh, if there is a tooth distal to the retainer the distal edge of the posterior anchor hole should be passed through the contact to ensure a seal around the tooth then if the stability of the retainer is questionable a low fusing modeling compound can be used in order to secure it in position then uh, the operator passes the septa through as many contacts as possible without the use of dental tape by stretching the septal dam four fingers each of the septum must not be allowed to bunch or fold then use uh, waxed dental tape to pass the uh, pass through all contacts then tape is preferred over flows because it is wider dimension more effectively uh, carries the rubber septa through contacts then invert the dam into gingival sulcus to complete the seal around the tooth and prevent leakage so finally with the edges of dam uh, invert interproximally complete the inversion facially and linkually using an explorer while the assistant 
the next is stream of air into the tooth then we can use a saliva ejector uh, because most patients are able and usually prefer to swallow the saliva it is optional so a properly applied upper dam uh, will be positioned and it will be comfortable to the patient and the patient should be assured that the rubber dam does not prevent swallowing or closing the mouth when there is a pause in the procedure and check to see that the complete rubber dam provides maximal access and visibility for the operator well as a removal of rubber dam the uh, first one is stress the dam facially pulling the septal rubber away from the general tissue then protect the underlying tissue by placing the finger between uh, fingertip between beneath the septum then in case of retainer forceps uh, it is unnecessary to remove any compound and because uh, it will break free as the retainer is spread and lifted from the tooth after the retainer is removed release the dam from the anterior anchor tooth and remove the dam and frame simultaneously so wipe the patient lip and napkin immediately after the dam and frame are removed the step 5 rinse the teeth uh, using a high volume uh, evacuator then lastly lay the teeth of rubber dam over a light colored flat surface or hold it up to the operating light to determine that no portion of the rubber dam uh, has remained between or around the teeth such a remnant would cause gingival inflammation so make sure that nothing remains in the operative field so that was all about uh, rubber dam i have explained uh, the components and step by step procedure so it is a uh, commonly asked essay question in operative dentistry or conservative dentistry uh, we need to explain the components and so all steps uh, need not to be explained you can uh, skip any of these steps uh, so you can combine uh, many steps so i'll come up with a new topic in dentistry and more thank you